Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Coffee and UFOs. Uh, Mike Rogers is joining me and um, we have a conversation today regarding an accusation that was made against Mike and many of you who know me from Paranormal Now. Uh, Mike has been on the show multiple times. I've had the opportunity and pleasure to speak with Mike on many occasions. So um, I reached out to Mike because <clears throat> the allegations made against him and the recording that I had heard did not ring true, um, not with my, the mic that I know, the conversations that we have had. And so I wanted to hear from Mike to find out, you know, what is this recording that we're hearing? Um, and can he explain and enlighten us on the situation? So, hey, Mike. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. <laughs> so for everyone listening, our audio levels are going to be a little off because we had some technical issues and we had to do some, as you can see, uh, workarounds. Yeah. Um, but if you have any issues with audio, please, please let me know. So Mike, go ahead and, um, can you tell us a little bit about, about the accusation made against you? Well, there's this guy named Ryan Gordon. I hate to giving him a, an audience because he's a, I never even heard of him before, but he's an, apparently is a, a would be skeptic, you know, <laughs> I guess, you know, I don't know much about him. The reason uh, this whole got started because he sent me a, an email where he said uh, that Travis Walton had said a whole bunch of strange things to him. And uh, Travis has since said it was all nonsense, you know. Uh, in fact, he, he told me first that he didn't even, didn't even know who Ryan Gordon was. I showed him that email, you know, a physical, you know, physically showed it to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well... He says, I remember talking to this guy like months ago, a year ago, something like that. And he says, but I don't remember anything about it, really. I says, he, and he said, he denied that he ever said the things that Gordon was saying that he said. So, you know, it, that's how it started. And it, then uh, this guy, well, actually, to back up a little bit, uh, Ryan Gordon had... Uh, asked for my friendship on Facebook. Uh, so he looked like a decent guy, so I accepted him, you know. The only thing I don't accept, you know, and as friends is, uh, of course, any family and all that, that's fine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I have a lot of family and a lot of friends. But anyway, he, uh, he then proceeded to just slowly work in on it, you know, and uh, he called me up one day, and he, and he, you know, after he sent that email to me, and he said that he wanted to talk to me, you know, like in person. I said, okay. I had no idea he was recording me, okay? Now, whatever you've heard, whatever is, is there uh, supposedly that I said, I can tell you that all I can tell you is I did talk to the guy, but I didn't say those things. In fact, uh, he was asking me about um, uh, hoaxes, and, and I said, "I said, well, he, he said that you and Travis ever talk about a hoax." I said, "Well, yeah, like uh, after the incident. I mean, the skeptics like Phil Class and Oberg. Uh, I can't remember who else were, were saying that the whole thing was a hoax." And so, yeah, uh, and see, we didn't work together in uh, '76. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, after the answer, uh, but the following year, '77, we did, and and uh, during that year, during the summer of that year, uh, we talked about what the skeptics were saying. You know, that it was all a hoax. You know, and uh, so I was telling Ryan Gordon that, and uh, so whatever he has laid out there is just not what I said. Yeah. And, you know, I call that digital manipulation because anything can be manipulated digitally you know <laughs> well so, so according to the the fair rights use act, act for um uh you know documentaries and journalism i'm just going to play a little clip here mike of the of the okay. beginning of the audio and it's it's very short in the beginning and so essentially the what comes off is that it sounds like you're saying that you and Travis had planned a a hoax, 
Um, so let me just play a little bit of that. What you remember is that yeah. I, 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 what he has there, he says, where I say, I don't, I don't really remember something like that. I don't really remember, but, and, and then, then I start, then he says, I start saying things, uh, but notice that I, I, I was, what he did include, he had to include, obviously, was, was something to lead in, which was me saying, I, I don't really remember. And then, uh, then something's cut out there, something missing, but, uh, uh, I told him about Travis and I was were in the woods that we were, I remember something about we were talking like we were there was a stump you know in the woods and uh, we were both had our saws and we were talking on that stump and the, uh, we were talking about uh, specifically actually about Phil, what Phil Class was saying mm-hmm. you know because he jumped on it right away and uh Basically, that's it. I mean, my mind is, you know, I'm a little bit unclear on what I said to him, uh, obviously, because I didn't record it, you know, <laughs> but uh, but he obviously did, and he's manipulated it since then. I mean, that's all I can say about that. Well, let me, now, let me, let me read this. I will the, say this. Yeah. Okay. R- later on, mm-hmm. like the following day, he wanted to go out to the site. I said, fine. So we went out to the site. And once we were at the site, uh, he was saying, uh, okay, tell me about this stuff about what you and Travis talked about. And I said, okay, well, you know, we kind of rambled around there a little bit at the site. And uh, uh, after a little while, I, I told him, you know, I don't, I don't understand. You know, why I couldn't understand why he was pushing so hard about a hoax and so at one point I said look I says uh, by the way I have this on tape <laughs> right now I don't have I don't have a there's no way to tie in here with at the moment but I would tell him and you know paraphrasing myself you know I'm saying uh, there's no way that this could be a hoax and we we're we we're looking at a stump uh, there on this side, and I said, "Look, look at the uh, look at the rings on the stump." And we were looking at various because I did all the samples originally, mm-hmm. and they showed that that in fact you could you could take those samples of where they came from and the trees, and, and you could line them up, and they would point exactly to where Travis was standing, right? And the UFO was was up above him to some extent, and uh, I says. I said, so obviously there was a UFO here, right? <laughs> what else would do this? I said, besides that, and then I talked, uh, talking about down the, down the way there, uh, looking at, at the road, you know, and I was telling him, uh, when we got down the road about a quarter of a mile away, I says, I and several other guys, when we were getting out of the truck, looked back and we saw a light raise up through the trees and a streak away, kind of like to the northeast. Mm-hmm. And uh, Steve Pierce and John Gallet, who are the last remaining people who will talk about it. Ken, Ken Peterson is still alive, but uh, for some reason he don't don't want to talk talk about it or be involved in it. So, uh, but you know, those two, besides myself, say, "Yeah, we we saw a light raise up and streak off." Uh, and and that, well, after that, we felt safer to go back, uh, which we did. And uh, so I, I was telling this guy, Ryan Grant, I said, for all those reasons, I mean, uh, there's no way it could be a hoax. So I don't know why you're pushing me on this, you know, mm-hmm. why you keep asking me the question. Anyway, that's so, basically that. So you kind of felt like he was pressing you to... to- so, yeah, he was he was pushing me, and I couldn't understand what in the world he kept pushing me about. Okay, so here at the time I didn't know that he had recorded my call. Yeah, uh, like the day before. So, Mike, here's the um, the transcript of the recording, and I put the link to the recording if people want to check it for themselves. 
Um, and again, we're not here to attack anybody. Um, Mike just, I wanted to give Mike a, a fair chance to um, defend himself and uh, share his side of the story. So this is the transcript from the alleged um, recording as a whole, um, as opposed yeah, I, to something I edited. I can't see what you're showing me there. It's yeah. like, Jeff, no, I'm gonna, I, can see the bottom, I can see the top of this screen, but oh, yeah, I'll read it to you right now. Like, I'm gonna read it to you okay. right now, Mike. So um, it's, it says, Mike Rogers, all I can remember like is that uh, we were we were talking in the woods one day, Travis and I, and uh, I I remember leaving a chainsaw on a stump. Okay, he had a saw, but he took his with him because we were talking about creating a a, a UFO hoax. Okay, and Ryan says, yeah, uh, Mike Rogers. I don't know. I don't know how how the UFO got there. Uh, but I remember that uh, uh, when I drove, when I was driving the truck and he jumped out, it was it was all deliberate. It was all a uh, staged thing. Okay. Yeah. And he ran up there and uh, there was something, there was something about the UFO um, not being real, although it looked real. Well, so basically, so, and of course, what you're saying is uh, you and Travis together hoax this? Mike Rogers. Yeah. I mean, Travis's brother, Dwayne, helped him. Um, Ryan, I believe that. Mike. Philip Class uh, actually suspected that um, uh, Dwayne was, was part of it. Ryan. Yeah. I mean, he was, Mike, I mean, he was his protector, and uh, he was saying weird things on that Fred uh, Sylvanas interview. Quote, I have nothing I don't fear for at all his life. I know where he's at, blah, 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 you know? Well, he's uh, he's obviously manipulated that. Uh, I don't know how or where. Like I say, I don't have a recording of that, of that particular call. Mm -hmm. uh, he has done something, okay? He's chopped things out or add things to, I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what he'd done, but all, all I was telling him on the phone is, is that uh, Travis and I in 1976, uh, 77, excuse me, were, were discussing what Bill Class had said. Uh, that was, it was all a hoax. Uh, in fact, Bill Class's idea that was, I was the ringleader and, uh, uh, I got all these guys, all every all the guys working for me, to participate in a hoax uh, for whatever reason, you know. And uh, that's what we were discussing that day. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, it, what the only time we discussed we we discussed that lots of times. <laughs> what Phil Class and other skeptics had said, and so. <sighs> I don't know what he's done to that. It's it's manipulation. That's all I can say. Digital right. So manipulation. yeah. So for people who are, are listening to this, if if you just heard what Mike just said, referencing a conversation about something Mike and I have talked about many times, Mike, you could take bits of those phrases that Mike just said just seconds ago, and you can rearrange that in such a way that it sounds like he's saying um, it was a hoax, and so. The, you know, I, I'm saying this from the standpoint of a of a friend. So whether that's bias or not, um, I'm I'm saying this from a friendly place, knowing Mike that um, I don't believe that this audio is real. I believe Mike, um, and for those who don't don't know, like Mike has a, a sincere interest in the paranormal, and he he's talked about so many aspects of it, and he's also been very skeptical and he refers to himself as the realist and um you know which i which i appreciate and so when we talk off camera as well um you know he's very um authentic and sincere uh and and he there's there is no wavering over these 40 years between any of uh, the witnesses particularly mike and, and travis um so you know, sometimes you just have to trust your gut. My gut tells me I'm, I'm believe Mike, and that's that's where I stand. And also, the other thing is this audio. 
when I first heard it, I was listening to it on my phone, which has a really bad speaker. And at first I thought, oh, this doesn't really sound like Mike. So um, I listened to it over and over again, put headphones on. Um, and then I was like, okay, maybe it is. I saw some comments that it sounded like it, this was manipulated. And if you listen closely to the beginning of the audio, the phrasing is very choppy and it kind of jumps from one subject to the next. And it really does sound like someone edited this and strung this together. Um, you know, I, I don't like ufology becoming a battlefield. You know, I think it's hard enough to keep this subject as legitimate as possible as, as we can. Um, so I don't, I don't like doing something like this, but I think it's important that we kind of get ahead of it. And, um, and, and, you know, if someone is, is being a debunker, you know, we need to challenge that. Yeah. Well, this guy, Alan Gordon, I'm, excuse me. <laughs> it's a hybrid. Ryan Gordon. Sorry. Ryan Gordon. Uh, He's an unknown. He's, he's what you might call a would-be skeptic. Mm. Uh, who's ever heard of him before? I think all he's trying to do here is become famous or, or well-known or something. That's what he's trying to do. Well, and he, claim, he claims that, that uh, sometime here in the future, he's going to work with uh, Robert Schaefer and that they're going to put together a documentary about all of this. And... And uh, Travis told me a lot of this. Uh, in fact, he's the one that told me about the YouTube. That they're going to do this documentary. They're going to present it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, uh, what Ryan Gordon is saying there altogether just doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit with anything. You know, all of us guys pass lie detector tests, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, well, but Mike... What, if, I, what I have said in the past, I have said that uh, people make a lot about it. I've said Travis Walton's supposed abduction because, uh, I mean, he's on his own with his story, right? Mm -hmm. Because once I drove off, none of us saw what happened. So, you know, in all truth, I can't, I can't vouch for what, what happened to Travis after that. Uh, well, what we, what so, we do you know, know... I mean, I don't know. I just I just don't know what happened to Travis, so that's the, that's the best I can say. There has been times I've, I've said maybe Travis Walton is, is hoaxing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think... So, that, but that's the thing is is what's being taken advantage of is that um, you, you have that very open-mindedness right where it, it's kind of like like the theory of gravity is quote-unquote a theory but we know gravity yeah. works but you still refer to it as a theory and, and that's yeah. often how you approach your conversation of these right. subjects so on the one hand i could see someone being a little confused maybe um if they weren't listening carefully or or, or took something out of context um but in, in this case we we both know that like philip class for example um, would try to entrap you um, and try, oh, yeah. try to set you up in to contradict yourself. And that, yeah. that's a typical debunker um, tactic. And so I think, you know, it's unfortunate. I feel like you, you're a victim in this regard. And what upsets me the most is that th these are people's lives. Like, this is your life. This is Travis's. There are other people... Um, to defame anyone and to try to slander their name, that's that's wrong and that's hurtful. Um, and so, so that's why yeah. this upset me the most. Well, it kind of upsets me. Of course, it takes an awful lot to keep me from being happy. <laughs> well, we were talking about that too. Like, you don't let stuff get you yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a pretty happy guy mm -hmm. without drugs. <laughs> a lot of people accuse me of that, including Travis. <laughs> but I don't use illegal drugs. I just don't. In fact, uh, in the state of Arizona, marijuana is legal now, but I still don't use it. Never, mm -hmm. it never did anything for me. And uh, <laughs> but it does so, for some know. people. So let's not forget. It's very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is. Drugs is terrible. You know, I can be happy. 
I don't need anything except the fact that my girlfriend left me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> of course. Uh, I've, I've always been happy. You know that. And, and Mike, you've put up with this kind of, you know, debunking for decades now and, and skepticism. Um, and, yeah. and, and this person's YouTube channel is clearly 100% dedicated to debunking the entire event. Um, it's just one video after <laughs> yeah, well. another. Um, and, I, and I think that that shows an, an implicit bias on their part. Um, so, you know, and I'm sorry that he made you feel like you could trust trust him you know well he was very sneaky all the way through I can tell you that he didn't tell me that he was recording me I tell you this though I got suspicious about this uh, before we went out to the site because mm -hmm. he'd already said enough to me that made me wonder what he was really getting at and so I have this little Sony very small Sony recorder you know, no moving parts, and uh, I had it in my pocket when I went out to the site, and and uh, I set my phone on his dash. That was because I didn't want to bump it or anything, you know. And I needed I needed the room in my pocket for that other recorder, which was already there. But nevertheless, uh, I recorded uh, that whole thing. And it came out pretty clear. My voice is pretty clear. And of course, being in my Levi's, it was uh, it made some scratchy noise and stuff. But uh, basically, just make this short. On the recording, I tell him there's no way this could have been a hoax. And you have a recording and, of this. And that that recording will be. Uh, I've just been waiting for him to make a fool of himself. And then here in a day or two, I'll I'll place that uh, piece. Uh, I don't know, not the whole recording. Mm -hmm. It's kind of boring, you know. But you know, the pertinent parts I'll I'll, I'll place on my page. Okay, the so video. do you I do you know audio. is it the recording that you recorded? Is it the same moment or a different moment in time between the two of you? I don't know what you mean. Uh, did, was were you actually both recording each other at the same time, or was this a different? I don't know. If, I day? have no idea if he recorded. Recorded. Uh, he would have just been recording himself at the site. He didn't say a lot, and he kept away from me for some reason. Oh, that's most, right. Most that's, of the time. That's right. Because in the in the recording that he posted, um, it does say that he does say he was in his truck at the time, um, and it did sound like you were on on a phone. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I was on my phone. Okay, well, this will be interesting, and I think it'll be fair for you to when you do upload that. Are you going to upload it on Facebook or? Well, this uh, phone call. Oh, oh yeah, the, the recording. Yeah, that I made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I say, the pertinent parts of it because it's pretty long. You know, it's like I don't know, forty-five minutes all together. But uh, and and there's a lot of noise in it because you know the court recorder was in my pocket. Uh, walking around and stuff, and uh, and he, he stayed away from me quite a, for most of the time. He was he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't like in my face. He was never closer than six feet to me. <laughs> so his, his voice does pick up on there here and there, but but uh, my voice picks up fairly well. Okay. And, uh, oh, well, that's good, and that's so, the most important thing. So let, yeah. let's, let me just ask you one more time. So the recording that was posted on YouTube by Ryan Gordon um, is that a manipulated recording? And do you re do you reject um, that it was a hoax? Definitely. You know, uh, I have no doubt that once he hears this recording on my page. He's going to call that digital manipulation. So what, you know? So and on and on it goes. <laughs> yeah. I know, that's why this, you know, this makes me so sad in a way because I, I, I just really wish this stuff wouldn't, wouldn't happen in ufology. It really upsets me. Um, Mike, I, I have a question from Charles Smarr um, about that the night of the event. Uh, okay. Mike, can um, can you ask Mike about the weather conditions, the night of the event, especially wind? Uh, no wind. Uh, not that I remember. 
Okay. There, there, there may have been maybe just at times there might have been a slight breeze, but hardly noticeable. Mm -hmm. uh, it was clear, you know, uh, there wasn't any clouds in the sky. The moon was out by the time we got near the object. Uh, John Gallet remembers seeing the moon off to the left of the way the point trap was pointing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah, just quiet, you know. Now, it was honey season. Every once in a while, during that day, we would hear gunshots, you know, off in the distance. So, um, what else do they want to know about that particular night? No, well, I think I think part of the question, because in this recording, it, it makes it sound like uh, there was a a staged UFO, right? And this is what, what's contradicting about it is that in the recording, it it's like you're asking, is it real? And that doesn't make sense if you're the one that that hoaxed it. <laughs> Why would you be asking that question? And, and especially if you're if you're admitting that you hoaxed it, that doesn't make any sense. But. Um, but the, apparently yeah, there is this, uh, this... Where, where's the details you know right well I, I, I was just talking just in general about what the skeptics said mm -hmm. uh, so I have no idea what he's done to it yeah yeah because if, if what would be the point if um, t to put this UFO out there into the woods and everybody was in on it but then there was there was no photo of this fake UFO floating in the air. There was like no one else knows about this. So which which means the conspiracy would have to be just between you and Travis, not the other guys in the truck. And then yeah. and then you and Travis would somehow have to get his brother involved, I suppose, is the allegation, to get the balloon to float out just 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 in the right spot at the right time. I mean, and then well, you know, it's really Tra Travis. Travis's brother Dwayne worked. For me the year before he started working for me yeah uh, the summer season you know and uh, uh, so I was actually Dwayne's friend before I even knew Travis mm -hmm. so uh, you know Dwayne and I were pretty close we, we, we got along real well uh, in fact real well as a matter of fact uh, we we're buddies and uh, uh, once Travis started working for me and Dwayne moved down to the valley you know uh, uh, you know, I got got a distant from him. Of course, he died here. Oh gosh, ten years ago or something like that. And of course, Dwayne Smith died, and then Alan Dallas died. And I I I, I don't really know the circumstances. I, I've heard things, but it's all hearsay. Mm -hmm. Alan supposedly died at a intersection in the somewhere in the valley. Uh, because of drugs, some kind of drug. Uh, Dwayne Smith supposedly died of a heart attack. So I, I just don't, that's all I know. Yeah. Well, Mike, we have a, a question here since we have you. <laughs> um, yeah. it, on that night, was, was there a different odor to the area, like a burnt electrical or ozone kind of smell? Uh, no. Uh, if there was any sort of an ozone smell to, uh, the, the beam of energy or whatever it was hit Travis, I wouldn't know because we took off immediately after that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of oblivious to anything that happened for, I don't know, eight or eight or ten minutes after we drove away. Because when we drove up uh, a quarter of a mile away and I stopped, uh, some of the guys, I mean, their, uh, a truck went by because we, we were inside of what they call the rim road. Mm -hmm. and uh, we, we saw a truck, a pickup or something go by, and some of the guys wanted us to go after that. I actually actually went out on the main road, on the rim road, for just a short distance. I said, you know, this is nonsense. We could never take it. Why in the world do we need guns? That's what they were saying. Guys from the back seat, saying, we need to get some guns. You know, I was like, what in the world? Guns aren't going to do any good. <laughs> So I turned yeah. the truck around and I went and went back. That's why I went back. And uh, of course, they had, they climbed into the truck. Uh, even if, you know, once I stopped a quarter of a mile away, and we'd had a 
five minute, six minute discussion, you know, a heated, heated kind of strange debate, you might say. Uh, we all got back in the truck, and uh, so they were with me for the rest of the ride on back to check on Travis, and Travis wasn't there. And you know, I after we looked around for him, couldn't find him, I got kind of emotional about it. So people, and I, you know, I had tears in my eyes, so uh, some people say, well, you're you're, you're crying about uh, your best friend being missing. The thing of it was, I wasn't what I was upset about. It was actually what you might call tears of joy because we didn't find him. Because mm-hmm. we were all expecting to, to see a charred body when we came back to the clearing. And there wasn't one. <laughs> he was gone. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know where he is, but He's not dead. Right. Okay. right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and uh, there there is that very emotional component to all this. You know, I, I really yeah. hope that um, Ryan Gordon just had a misunderstanding of a conversation you had. Um, you know, and that that we can kind of you know he can move or you both can move on. Um, I know you'll move on anyway. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't think he's going to give up until he hears what I recorded. Fact, he won't even give up then, because just just to even mention his name uh, brings him up in the limelight, right? Yeah, I, I, I nobody, understand. Nobody, I, yeah. I've never even heard him before. That. Certainly not as a skeptic. Yeah, no, I, I understand. So that's, that's why a would-be skeptic. You know, he's trying to become a would-be skeptic that, with some sort of notoriety. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess you kind of need you need something, some piece of evidence to to um, legitimize yourself. But um, I don't know. Well, let's 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 end it here, Mike. I'm, I'm glad you, you came on. You, you said what you had to say. Um, okay. But then, but then we'll have Thanks, to Alan. we'll have to have you back on Paranormal Now. Anyway, it's been too long. <laughs> yeah, been a while, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. 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 Well, it's been like nine, ten months, something like that. So it was almost a year. It goes into oh, since we wow. last did something together, yeah. Um, and well, both, the older you get, the shorter time gets, you know. That's true, which also scares me because I've got some some ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm 74 now, so I'm uh, I'm right there on the brink between uh, yesterday and tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, I mean, we were time just we were just talking. To speed up, it really does seem to speed up. I, I get I get I get up at five o'clock every morning because I like watching the sun. You know, five o'clock uh, this time of year is uh, like you know a half hour before the sunrise, right? And, uh, but I like watching the sunrise because all my life it's been like an early morning thing. You know, logging or whatever we're doing, tree planting. Uh, I've done all that stuff, and it's you have to get up early mm-hmm. any, any time you work in the woods. So, and usually. Five o'clock is just about the time we get up, so that's kind of ingrained in me. Five o'clock is and, just about the time some of us go to bed. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and nowadays, once in a while, I need a nap. Not always, but you know. You know, it's, I, I, it's funny, Mike. Mike, as people always say that when they get older, right? But and I think it, it's true. But at the same time, when we were kids, we were napping. I remember, you know, when I was a teenager. You know, I, I, you know, I'd conk out on occasion, you know, between like after school activities or classes. I mean, I think, I think that's okay. And that, and that is healthy. I think we've also been ingrained in our head, like taking naps is somehow not a good thing. But I mean, farmers, I mean, that was regular life for millennia. You know, you, you could take a couple of naps during the day and, um, you know, short naps just to re-energize. So, so, yeah. keep, so keep napping, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I don't even have TV. I, I deliberately don't because uh, I don't like commercials specifically, mm. and the news doesn't mean much of anything to me except to uh, bring me down, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I like being happy, so I just don't even watch TV. There is there is going to be a Travel Channel uh, two hour documentary coming up here sometime in October. It's going to have Travis and I and, and uh, other people like my sister Dana on there. Cool. Okay. Uh, I don't know what else. They're, they, they're supposedly did some man in the street interviews. I don't know. Well, I and hope... they'll be using the, most of my illustrations, uh, that, you know, depict the event. And uh, so 
Yeah, and you're working on a painting too. Are you going to share the paintings with the world? My Christ painting? You yeah. bet. When it's cool. finished. <laughs> I haven't been able to work on it a whole lot. Some, but not a whole lot because uh, just thing. I mean, this thing with Ryan Gordon come up here started a, a two or three days ago. It's, mm -hmm. you know, heavy. Uh, and I've been talking to Travis about it and stuff. And, and Travis just kind of doesn't like any of it, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but and of course my granddaughter is here and my son who's lived with me his entire life Heston Rogers and my granddaughter's name is Zelly <laughs> she pretty much controls us like I got my office door shut here but uh, it's not locked <laughs> uh, because I don't want I got this rule about uh, I don't like secrecy okay mm -hmm. I don't like it uh, I need my life needs to be open, and a lot of times it's it. People have said I'm too open, like on Facebook. Certain people said you're too open, and I think, well, fine. <laughs> I don't have anything to hide, you know. Yeah, I think I think people often mis misinterpret how you, um, particularly when you type something out. Um, it could it could come. It's very terse, and so without hearing your tone, without having a conversation with you, I think exactly. people, people react, yeah. react harshly um, yeah. and, until they actually I've engage I've in conversation. I've about that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's since styled out the Pony Express, you know, which my grandfather actually rode the Pony Express. Wow. But uh, I can add, so I got these guys on horses, right? <laughs> and the little strap across their, the horse's thing says, U.S. text. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's called yeah. It's lost in translation. It happens happens yeah. far too often. And that's why I want to give you know Ryan Gordon the benefit of the of the doubt. You know, I, I don't I don't like slandering, and I don't want people to go attack him and say terrible things. Um, you know, let 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 this let you speak for yourself. Um, and I, my guess is the vast majority of us. Um, you know, know, you know who, who's telling the truth right now. Yeah. Um, so, okay, Mike, one quick question before I let you go. Uh, this is from uh, Dingus. Did they ever see any other unusual lights or experiences in those woods prior to their event? Any stories from other woodcutters? No. Uh, a friend of mine by the name of Jody Crandall told me that one time he was driving, or, or he was in the in a truck, I guess his dad, his name is Gene Crandall, was driving the truck, and he, uh, he uh, looked over, I don't know which way he looked, but he looked over and there was this thing that looked like a, a shaggy thing, but it had like a sheep's face, mm -hmm. and he said it, it was so freaky, it scared him, so he... That's, that's the only experience that I've heard about, you know, as far as like any weird thing prior to that. But um, so it's not like best, it's not like you guys were psychologically primed to to no, see uh, a UFO in that area. Well, yeah, five years prior to that, it's funny that I was driving a, a, a Dodge Charger, mm -hmm. uh, a new Dodge Charger, and. Uh, we were, there were, uh, there were six of us in, in the uh, Charger, and I know who they all were. You know, Travis was sitting in the passenger side in front. I was driving, and uh, in the back, which was a, was a Dodge Charger, it had a pretty large back there. It had a, a, a way to make it out into a bed, and so uh, the, uh, the rest of them, which was my brother Charles, uh, my sister Dana, my sister Joy, and my wife at the time, uh, Katie. Okay, and uh, we saw this this thing. First, I saw it right there in Snowflake. We were headed west, okay, out of Snowflake uh, towards Heber, which is pretty much straight west. And uh, 
I, well, I saw first what looked like a street light. I think I told you this one time uh, on your show here. The last one I did with you a while mm-hmm. back. Coffee and UFOs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, that, anyway, was, that was the last story. one we did. Yep. Yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, it was a sphere. It ended up being a sphere that came down out of the cloud and then shone a very bright light mm-hmm. from a point that just, there was no light picture, it was just a, an actual point. But it lit up an area the size of uh, like two or three football fields, okay? And we didn't see that until, I don't know, it was just like luck or whatever. The light actually came on just as we came where we could see what it was shine on the bottom I've done an illustration of that too and uh, it's uh, there were several there were several other witnesses now there were two guys who saw it from the other side and there, uh, there was a, a bus load of kids uh, the bus driver's name was uh, Rue Hunt mm-hmm. I don't know who the other guys were because Rue Hunt said that uh, they didn't. They didn't want anything. They didn't want to look at. They didn't want to believe it. Uh, they didn't want to talk about it. So, so you know, which is normal. So there's nothing yeah. from them. Yeah. Yeah. But I do have Rue Hunt's uh, thing on tape. I still have it uh, because we went to a. Travis and I went to a. A convention. The first convention we ever went to, which was in Tonopah, Arizona, and Rue Hunt surprisingly was there. And this, of course, was in 1976, uh, you know, later in the year. And and for the first time, we heard that somebody else had said anything about it. Uh, but and I have I have that thing that that Ruhan did to that audience uh, uh, there at Tonopah. Uh, it's on tape. And of course, my brother will testify, and my sister will testify. Uh, I haven't even seen my ex-wife Katie for several years. Who knows what she'll do? But, uh, Travis knows it. I know it. My brother knows it. Mm-hmm. My sister Dana knows it. My sister Joy knows it. And uh, I got that thing on Rue Hunt with Rue Hunt. You know, the other two guys that we know about uh, have talked to us. Uh, I don't even know where they are now. And in fact, Travis and I've talked about that. And and uh, he doesn't, one of them's name is Barry Scott, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, if you're listening, Barry, <laughs> I'd, like to talk, I'd like to talk to you about that incident. Anyway, right. oh, that's so good. That. Yeah, I'm glad we got that out there. We can continue that um, later on, you know, when you come back on Paranormal Now. So, uh, let's wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, for, for jumping into the chat today. Appreciate that. Um, and thank you, Mike, for, you know, you're coming good. on and speaking out as you do <laughs> you bet alan all right thanks again everyone and um that's it for this special edition of coffee and ufos